In today's A-level and IB biology video, we're going to be taking a quick look at the difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms, and we're going to be looking at how surface area to volume ratio has affected whether organisms are made up of one cell, so a unicellular, or made up of two cells or more, so that they are multicellular. Now, an example of a unicellular containing only one cell organism is the paramecium, which is an example of a protoctist. An amoeba is a second example. Now, how do they obtain their nutrients? Well, because they are made up of only one cell, it means that they have a very large surface area to volume ratio. And that means that diffusion is perfectly adequate as a means of obtaining nutrients, whether that's oxygen or if they need to remove carbon dioxide, they can do that all by using diffusion. And that's because diffusion occurs nice and quickly when you have a large surface area to volume ratio. Now don't get confused, one cell has a large surface area to volume ratio because if you think about sugar dissolving in a cup of coffee, now 10 grams of sugar found in the form of grains has a much larger surface area than a single sugar lump. So that's why diffusion is perfectly adequate for these unicellular organisms. But what happens when we want to be multicellular? Well, here you find that the surface area to volume ratio is much lower, and it means that diffusion is inadequate. And this is where the need for transport systems arose. So that's where the circulatory system, all the blood, the arteries, and the veins and capillaries came about. Now, because we were multicellular, it means that there were enough cells to carry out lots of different functions and we call that specialisation differentiation. Now what you find in multicellular organisms is that emergent properties come out and that's where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So taking a plant for example, so we know that the palisade cells can carry out photosynthesis, we know that the roots can anchor the plant, we know that the stem can grow upwards, so each different organ has its own function. However, the plant as a whole is greater than the sum of its plants, which means a sunflower example is able to move so that it can face the sun in order to capture as much of that sunlight energy as possible so it can photosynthesize and produce glucose. Its roots enable it to anchor, its stem allows it to grow taller so it can carry out multiple functions, much more than the individual parts. Now let's look at an animal example, so for example the tiger. Now the tiger's eyes contain rods and cones which are sensitive to light. So we know those rods and cones will detect the light and therefore be able to convert that to an electrical impulse which can be read by the brain. Now the emergent properties which arise from the tiger's eyes is that it allows it to see so clearly that it can become a very effective killing machine and have a profound effect on any ecosystem that the tiger is found in. So that's everything I wanted to say with this video. It's not anything in too much detail or too scientific, it's just to give you an idea as to how unicellular, multicellular organisms arose and how important it is that you understand that with multicellular organisms, the fact that there are so many different types of cell means that the end result, the end living organism, can be extremely specialised in order to carry out a particular function.